The distances between stars are so vast, it's hard to wrap your mind around it. Even the distant Voyager spacecrafts, which have just entered interstellar space, would require tens of thousands of years to reach the closest star. To put that into perspective, the average distance to Pluto is approximately 40 astronomical units or 40 times the span between the Sun and Earth. It took NASA's New Horizons, the fastest spacecraft traveling in the solar system, roughly 10 years to complete its journey to the dwarf planet. By contrast, the distance to Alpha Centauri, our closest stellar neighbor, is an astounding 277,000 astronomical units, equivalent to 4.4 light years, about 7,000 times farther than Pluto. At New Horizons speed, it would take an incredible 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. So yeah, getting a spacecraft to another star is a monumental challenge. Or is it? Welcome to Territory. This is your space. You may have heard of Project Breakthrough Starshot, a program aiming to propel ultra-fast nanospacecraft, also known as light sails using laser beams. The thing is, Breakthrough Starshot centers on a miniature design equipped with enormous solar sails to harness a beam of light and journey to Alpha Centauri. However, due to its tiny size, the probe is unlikely to collect significant scientific data upon arrival, serving more as a groundbreaking engineering achievement than a fully-fledged scientific mission. But what if we needed to send a larger probe, say one about the size of the Voyager probes with additional sensors and controls? This is where a fascinating new concept takes stage. Enter the Sunbeam mission. It suggests utilizing relativistic electron beam propulsion to send a spacecraft beyond our boundaries of interstellar space. Why electron beams, you ask? Well, unlike traditional propulsion systems that rely on onboard fuel, Sunbeam utilizes an external power source. This removes the need for heavy fuel, decreasing the spacecraft's mass and allowing for greater acceleration. Additionally, electrons are easier to accelerate than other particles, which enhances the efficiency of this method. Building on this, the electron beams consist of streams of electrons accelerated to nearly the speed of light. When directed toward a spacecraft, the beam would push against it enabling the spacecraft to achieve remarkable speeds, up to 10% the speed of light. This means the probe could travel to Alpha Centauri, our nearest star system, in just over 40 years. The physics behind this is pretty fascinating. When the electrons are moving at such high speeds, something called the relativistic pinch effect happens. Normally, electrons repel each other because they have the same negative charge. But when traveling close to the speed of light, Time dilation reduces the relative time experienced by the electrons, preventing them from repelling each other significantly. This keeps the beam together and focused, allowing it to keep delivering thrust even when it's far from the sun. A key part of Sunbeam success relies on a stationary satellite, known as a statite, placed close to the sun. Unlike regular satellites that orbit, the statite hovers in place by using the sun's radiation pressure and magnetic fields. From its position, it can direct the electron beam towards the spacecraft. The statite would sit as close as the Parker Solar Probe's closest approach to the sun, meaning we would need to develop materials capable of withstanding that intense heat. Achieving this setup could potentially shorten travel time from millennia to mere decades. By using thermoelectric conversion in a near-solar stationary satellite, large beam infrastructure can potentially be launched in the near term without waiting for the industrialization of near-Earth space," said the research team. So yes, all of this remains a concept for the future, which is exactly what brought the scientists together in the first place. While the challenges may seem significant, they are not insurmountable, as humanity has already developed similar technologies in other fields, even if not yet as advanced. Number 1. Generating and Maintaining the Beam Producing a high-energy electron beam like the 19 giga electron volts needed at 100 astronomical units, is within the range of current technology, as demonstrated by the Large Hadron Collider. However, maintaining such a beam over interstellar distances remains unexplored. Second, energy harnessing and conversion. The statite must convert solar energy into electricity using high temperature thermionic converters. Similar systems are being researched for space-based solar power projects like NASA's experiments with photovoltaic arrays designed for extreme conditions. 
The Parker Solar Probe Solar Arrays provide a closer analog for operating near the sun. Third, spacecraft adaptation. To withstand such a feat, the spacecraft requires advanced navigation to handle external thrust. Similar challenges have been addressed in precision navigation systems used in autonomous spacecraft like NASA's Juno, which adjusts its trajectory in Jupiter's intense radiation environment. Four, material durability. Withstanding extreme heat and radiation is critical for the stationary satellite. NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which uses a carbon composite heat shield to survive temperatures above 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, offers a direct example. Another example would be the European Space Agency Solar Orbiter, which with its titanium heat shield demonstrates other materials designed for similar conditions. And lastly, beam focus over distance. Preventing beam spread requires precise engineering. Technologies like adaptive optics, used in ground-based telescopes to correct light distortions over long distances, offer a conceptual parallel. Additionally, experiments with laser communication systems, such as NASA's Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, illustrate strategies for maintaining focus over vast distances. So as you can see, these interconnected technologies have the potential to come together and pave the way for building a spacecraft capable of taking us to the stars. And this research shows that it is possible to push a scientifically useful probe to Alpha Centauri within our lifetime with minimal advances to existing technology. The journey to the stars is filled with challenges, but humanity's innovative spirit will continue to push boundaries. From generating high-energy electron beams to mastering the extreme conditions near the sun, every piece of this puzzle showcases our growing capabilities. Technologies like the Large Hadron Collider, Parker Solar Probe, and Adaptive Optics demonstrate that many of the building blocks are already here, waiting to be refined and combined. And the Sunbeam Mission concept reminds us that interstellar travel isn't just a dream for a distant future. It's a tangible goal, achievable with incremental advances in technology. While there are still obstacles to overcome, such as maintaining beam focus over interstellar distances or developing spacecraft that can adapt to continuous external thrust, they represent opportunities to innovate, to collaborate, and to imagine solutions that bridge the gap between science fiction and reality. A spacecraft reaching Alpha Centauri within our lifetime could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and our place within it. What do you guys think? I know a lot of you are skeptical, but this could be a good start. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like our videos, please consider becoming a member to support our work. And don't forget to subscribe to Territory, because this is your space. In 2017, astronomers detected an unusual object that passed through our solar system, which was later named Oumuamua. Its name means messenger in Hawaiian, reflecting its status as the first interstellar object ever observed. The cigar-shaped object, estimated to be about 800 meters long and 80 meters wide, came from outside our solar system, traveling at a speed that indicated it wasn't bound by our sun's gravity. This made it an intriguing subject for study, as it provided scientists with an unprecedented opportunity to observe an object from another star system. However, its origins, composition, and even its unusual motion left many questions unanswered. Two years later, in 2019, another interstellar object, a comet named Borisov, was discovered by astronomers. Unlike its predecessor, comet Borisov came with a tail displaying typical features of a comet, such as a bright and expansive coma. The comet, moving at a high velocity, had also come from outside the solar system and was the second known interstellar object to pass through. Borisov's trajectory suggested it was not bound to the sun either, and it would eventually continue its journey out of the solar system. While both Oumuamua and comet Borisov were fleeting visitors, their appearances marked significant milestones in astronomy, suggesting that interstellar objects might be more common than we initially thought. This raised a very important question. How many other objects from our stellar neighbors could be visiting our solar system? A new research examines the amount of material from nearby stars that could reach our solar system. Their findings suggest that some of these interstellar visitors, originating from our neighboring star system Alpha Centauri, may already be here. 
The Alpha Centauri star system consists of three stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, locked in a binary dance, and Proxima Centauri, a faint red dwarf. This entire system is moving toward us at a speed of 22 kilometers per second, or about 79,000 kilometers per hour, making it an ideal subject for studying how material travels between solar systems. In roughly 28,000 years, Alpha Centauri will reach its closest approach to us, about 200,000 astronomical units from the Sun. Scientists believe that material ejected from this system can and will reach us, and in fact, some of it may already be here. Existing models of material ejection from star systems are based partly on how our own solar system expels matter, and the researchers built their work on these models. Their findings suggest that Alpha Centauri may have ejected a significant amount of material, estimating that around 1 million particles larger than 100 meters in diameter are already within our Oort cloud. This animation that tries to bring the research to life shows our sun marked in a black hexagon, and its orbit is shown as a gray solid line. Alpha Centauri is represented by the yellow star, with its orbital path shown as a blue solid line. The study visualizes how Alpha Centauri moves through the galaxy and tracks the movement of material it ejects, some of which may already be in our solar system. However, the simulation shows that while particles from Alpha Centauri could plausibly reach our solar system, their size matters. According to the scientists, small particles, those that would appear as meteors in Earth's atmosphere are unlikely to make it. They face numerous obstacles along their journey, including magnetic fields, drag from the interstellar medium, and potential destruction through sputtering or collisions. But the research also found that some material from Alpha Centauri have already reached our solar system, with most of it traveling for less than 10 million years. It's fascinating to imagine that when their journey began, dinosaurs roamed the Earth, and the age of mammals had yet to begin. But to survive the journey, these particles must be larger than about 10 microns. Researchers estimate that around 10 Alpha Centauri particles currently enter Earth's atmosphere as detectable meteors, a number expected to increase tenfold over the next 28,000 years. This research reinforces the idea that our solar system is not isolated. If material can travel between star systems, it offers valuable insight into how planets form. Getting a clear understanding of how material travels from Alpha Centauri to our solar system not only enhances our knowledge of interstellar transport, but also sheds light on the interconnected nature of stellar systems and the potential for material exchange throughout the galaxy. Speaking of traversing interstellar distances, scientists have proposed a breakthrough method that could take us to Alpha Centauri in just 40 years. Imagine floating through our cosmic neighborhood, where our sun and planets are cradled within an enormous, mysterious bubble, a swath of space that scientists call the local hot bubble. It's a sprawling region of low-density gas, stretching hundreds of light years in all directions, heated to millions of degrees. But how did this bizarre bubble come to be? Scientists believe that around 10 million years ago, multiple star explosions or supernovae occurred in this region. Research suggests that around 14 million years ago, powerful supernovae erupted, carving out a bubble of hot gas called the local bubble. Over time, this bubble expanded, sweeping up clouds of interstellar gas and dust along its surface. As centuries passed, these clouds condensed, giving birth to thousands of new stars. Our sun was far from this event when the bubble began forming, but roughly five million years ago, it drifted into the bubble's interior during its journey around the galaxy. Now we reside within this expansive 1,000 light year wide structure, observing active star formation on the bubble's surface, while the interior remains surprisingly empty. This discovery affirms a decades old theory, suggesting that supernovae can compress gas, creating fertile grounds for star birth. This led astronomers to think that if this phenomenon happened here, how widespread might these cosmic bubbles be across the galaxy? A group of astronomers has now charted the bubble uncovering an unusual asymmetry in its shape and temperature distribution, as well as identifying a mysterious tunnel-like structure, pointing toward the constellation Centaurus. Our local cosmic neighborhood just got a whole lot more intriguing. Imagine a fish trying to figure out the shape of its tank while staying right in the middle. It wouldn't be something very easy for the fish to do, unless we give it human-like intellect and the right tools. Enter the right tool 
the Max Planck Institute of Extraterrestrial Physics powerful space-based X-ray telescope called Erosita. One major advantage of Erosita is where it operates in space. Earth's atmosphere stretches surprisingly far, with a vast halo of hydrogen called the Geocorona, extending up to 100 times Earth's radius, which is more than 370,000 miles from the surface. E. Rosita is mounted on a space observatory stationed about 930,000 miles from Earth. At this gravitationally stable point, where the poles of Earth and the Sun balance, the X-ray observatory is uniquely positioned as the first to capture X-ray images of the sky from completely beyond the reach of our planet's glowing geocorona. Using the telescope, the researchers found that the bubble is expanding more vertically, away from the galactic plane, rather than along the horizontal plane. This makes sense because vertical directions face less resistance compared to horizontal ones. The researchers found that the uneven temperature distribution in the bubble matched the supernova theory for its formation, suggesting that stars may have indeed been exploding in our region relatively recently, as close as a few million years ago. What we didn't know was the existence of an interstellar tunnel towards Centaurus, which carves a gap in the cooler interstellar medium, says astrophysicist Michael Freiberg of the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. This region stands out in stark relief thanks to the much improved sensitivity of E. Rosita and a vastly different surveying strategy compared to Rosat. We still don't know exactly what the tunnel leads to, but several intriguing objects lie in its path, such as the gum nebula, another neighboring bubble, and several molecular clouds. The team, however, suspects that the Centaurus tunnel in the LHB may just be a part of a network of hot gas tunnels that bore their way between the cool gas of the interstellar medium between stars. It's possible that this tunnel could be part of a larger, interconnected network of hot bubbles and cosmic tunnels that make up the galaxy, an idea first proposed in 1974 but lacked significant evidence until now. Another interesting fact is that the Sun must have entered the LHB a few million years ago, a short time compared to the age of the Sun, which is 4.6 billion years. Another scientist added, it is purely coincidental that the Sun seems to occupy a relatively central position in the LHB as we continuously move through the Milky Way. This new finding is exciting because now we might be on the verge of uncovering this network, which could provide valuable insights into the recent history and structure of our galaxy. What do you guys think? Comment below to let me know.